of sex crimes, uh, crimes of violence, uh, theft. Whether crypto advanced or unspeakably new, Bitcoin.com has a wallet for you. This Ridleyo is sponsored by Freekeen.com. I have a question uh, about the, the his about his stance on the Cybercrime and Identity Theft Bureau that is put together since 2014. Because since 2014, you have been uh, going after wanting to put a back door into cell phones. You have lobbied DFS to push away the Bitcoin community and the blockchain community because they were supposedly criminals. You have been pushing the world legislature to create backdoor in other, in other places around the world, and all those places have told you, no, we're not interested. So has your stance on backdoor encryption in phone, like uh, the bill you got Mr. Titoni or Mr. Mosley introduced in Albany, has your view changed, or are you still pushing for backdoor in electronic device? Well, I know where you stand on this. <laughs> well, I'm a computer professional, and I'm also a Bitcoin entrepreneur Upstown Manhattan. Good. Well, and I'm your stance, we know where my stance, where, have your stance changed or are you still going like this? Because if you... Okay. okay. Sorry. So I'll stop. May I give you a little background to the very thoughtful question by the gentleman? You and I live our lives today probably on smartphones. We don't take paper notes. Uh, we communicate by smartphones. Uh, indeed, these phones have revolutionized our lives in a really powerful and positive way. Can we all agree on that? Okay, no, we're not one shape yet. <laughs> I'll tell you whose lives it is also revolutionized. It's the criminals. Because the criminals use their cell phones just like you and I use these cell phones to talk to each other, to text each other, uh, to send messages and pictures to each other. And it can be cases involving child sex abuse, it could be cybercrime, it could be terrorism. And so they're doing just what you and I are doing. They're using their cell phones for all purposes. Now, the US federal government, in its dealing with uh, the NSA, uh, and you heard this through the Snowden revelations, uh, there was great upset and anger about the federal government uh, snooping into people's electronic communications. And as a consequence of that, Apple, an amazing company, and Google, an amazing company, uh, decided that they really wanted to get away from the toxicity of uh, any, any working relationship with the government in response to requests by law enforcement for information. And so what they decided to do was to redesign their cell phones. They redesigned their cell phones so that um, law enforcement, myself, FBI, uh, even when they had a search warrant authorized by a judge, which means I went to a judge and I said, I believe there's evidence in this case about rape, robbery, murder, identity theft, and here's why, and the judge agreed with me, they engineered their phones so they could no longer open the phones themselves. Now, let me tell you the consequence of that decision. I have 535 phones in my office of cases involving rape, robbery, murder, terrorism, terrorism finance, child abuse, and economic crime that I can't access. Uh, the people who are affected by my inability to access those phones are victims of child abuse, rape, robbery, terrorism, and the like. So I believe passionately that we should have our privacy. I also believe that that doesn't mean that we should live in a world of anonymity where if you are engaged in criminal conduct, that you can do that and that there's no power of the government or the courts, put aside the, the courts, to gain access to critical evidence that will protect the rights of victims. So, my, my stance has only become more clear as I have seen the problem grow bigger and bigger in my own office. And let me tell you this, we talk about this issue mostly reading about it when we think of San Bernardino, terrorism. And our office does terrorism cases, and our cases are affected by encryption. But the biggest impact of this encryption is not going to be in the federal cases, but in our state courts. 
who handle 95% of the cases in the country. So it is those state court crimes, the very, very personal crimes of sex crimes, uh, crimes of violence, uh, theft, theft from seniors, cybercrime. Uh, these are the cases that we can no longer get access to information to because the companies have re-engineered their devices specifically for the purpose so that we cannot get access. I don't call this a backdoor, sir. We were able to act, we were only able to access these devices by getting a search warrant, historically, and then sending the device back to Apple with a search warrant, and they would open the device themselves and get the that information that was requested and send it back to us. Now, you may call that a backdoor, but I certainly don't. I call it a court-ordered search warrant, and, and the phone was sent back to the company to get what was relevant and responsive uh, from the phone. So you allowed the Russian to you allowed the Russian to hack into everybody's phone and to give us Trump if you give a million phone to be allowed to be open because 180 phone or one billion phone is the same rule. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. We're not shouting out questions. I'm sorry. I'm his topic is so wrong, and I hope. Call on somebody else. I, okay, sorry. I will ask for a non endorsement from VID when we come Thank from the endorsement time. Hi. Why does the world look like this? Well, it's because you're using these instead of these. Admittedly, so am I sometimes. But if you're not using Bitcoin yet, you're missing the boom of the century. So go to Bitcoin.com, get their free wallet, find out what it's like to be in a free market. Whether crypto advanced or unspeakably new, Bitcoin.com has a wallet for you.